Hello, I'm Stefan Kreber, I'm the project leader for LexD, and today I'd like to go over Docker and specifically how one can run Docker inside of LexD containers. Before we look into that, I'd like to go over why you would even want to do that. After all, both LexD and Docker run containers, so why would you want to run Docker inside of LexD? Well, that's because the kind of containers they run are quite different. LexD focuses on system containers. LexD runs an entire Linux distribution um, in much the same way you would on a physical system or virtual machine or cloud instance. Those systems are meant to be long running, persistent, um, can be managed over SSH or using normal deployment tool and configuration managers, um, really exactly like you would any normal Linux system. Docker is more meant to distribute specific applications. Uh, most Docker containers are effectively stateless, with the container itself being something you can easily throw away and recreate on a newer version, and your data usually living as much as possible outside of that container just being passed in. So Docker is, is really a good tool to for, for upstreams and other projects to distribute a working solution to as many users as possible, um, give them the choice of what version they want, and let them assemble a bunch of containers together to get the, um, the platform that they want. Now, that, that doesn't really um, conflict with LexD in any way. Um, you can totally use LexD to create a whole number of effectively virtual systems as containers, give access to some of those to different users or use those for different projects. And some of those particular projects might use Docker to, to get the actual service or application running inside the container. Some others won't. Some others will just use normal packages or they might use snaps or flatbacks or anything else. Um, but for those that do need Docker for some of their applications, it's perfectly possible to install Docker inside of FlexD containers, and that's what I'm going to be going over today. So there are a few things to kind of keep in mind. Um, Docker was obviously not designed to run inside containers in the first place, and for Docker to work optimally, it needs um, like some specific file system backing and features that the Docker layers um, can, be, can be stored and stacked in like, using as little space as possible and as fast as possible. Because my system is using ZFS, as we can see here, um, Docker's default uh, method of applying layers, which would use uh, an overlay file system, will not work. Uh, you can't use overlay file systems on top of ZFS. And the issue here being that it, it, Docker would fall back to its VFS backend, uh, which then ends up effectively unpacking all layers and reassembling them on a per container basis, duplicating a lot of data. It will work fine, but it's going to be slow and it's going to be quite wasteful. So the first thing I want to do is actually create a new storage pool in LexD uh, that we'll call Docker. And for that one, I'm going to use BurFS. BurFS is one of the storage backends that Docker supports natively, and that will give us a much better behavior as far as handling layers. Then what I'm going to be doing is create a new instance. So I'm going to call it, uh, use Ubuntu 404 in this case, call the instance demo. All right. Um, that's just a basic Ubuntu instance at this point. It has nothing special. Uh, the next stage is going to be creating a new storage volume on that Docker storage pool I created earlier. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to call the volume demo. Um, storage volume create. There we go. And then this is going to get attached to the demo container. So demo, we're going to call the, the device that's being added Docker. It's of type disk. The source pool for it is also called Docker. And the source volume was called demo. And we want that volume to be used for varlib Docker. All right. And then there are a few configuration bits that need to be set on that container so that Docker works properly inside it. The first one is security nesting equals true. That allows nested containers, which is required for Docker. Uh, and then there are two secu extra security options to intercept and um, emulate some specific system calls that would normally not be allowed inside unprivileged containers, 
but that Docker relies on for its layers. So the first one of those is security syscalls intercept make node. So to enable that. And the second one is security syscalls intercept set exada. All right, and then restart the container. Those two interception options, the first one effectively allows for uh, creating, so using make node for a character device of uh, major and minor zero, which is used by uh, the overlay and some of the layer logic to flag, I believe, a directory being deleted by a layer. And then the exata part of it is uh, used to similarly track some whiteout files at, in the overlay. So those are two things we noticed were problematic when running Docker inside of LexD. So we've done some work on the LexD side to support effectively in kernel interception of those system calls, sending requests to LexD in user space. LexD makes sure that everything is safe and then performs that action as uh, a more privileged user and then returns back to the container. So with that in place, now let's just go inside that container. And I'm just gonna be following the normal install instructions at this point. Um, so literally copy pasting from Docker's website. The first one just installs some dependencies to be able to actually install the packages. Okay, I'm gonna be loading the GPG key for the repository and then lastly install the Docker repository itself. And now we get to actually install Docker. Right. here we go. And that's it for what I'm going to be following from this guide. So I'm just going to be switching over to a full screen terminal. Okay. The install done. Let's switch over to this. There we go. So still in that container. Now we can play with Docker a bit. So let's just try to make sure that everything is fine, run a hello world. All good. Let's run Ubuntu. This works just fine. We're inside a Ubuntu container running on Docker inside an XD container. And let's finish with something a bit more complex. Um, with uh, running Nextcloud. I'm just trying to remember. I believe the image is called Nextcloud. Oh, but it needs a port mapping. Okay. Uh, port mapping, so something like that, I believe. Uh, and Nextcloud. So that's running all of the layers. I'm gonna be extracting and setting them up. And then we should have a Nextcloud container running with a port mapping in place. All right, so just moving back. And let's see. So the port mapping uh, that was put in place uh, makes it so that port 8080 on the instance itself is now mapped to, um, to the Nextcloud container running inside it. So if we get the IP address of the LXD container, which in this case is 172.17.250.148, and I hit that from the web browser. The, uh, 250.148 on port 8080. Here we go. Uh, so it's just create the basic user and finish up. Do not need to remember the password. And uh, the redirection didn't quite work. Right. So I'm just going back on the URL uh, because the setup wizard thing redirected me to the wrong place. All right, and that's the welcome wizard for Nextcloud. So just start using it. Okay. And this is working. So that was an example of just like a mostly random uh, Docker image I picked from the Docker Hub. The vast 
majority of Docker images will work fine. There's, there are going to be a few that will not work properly in such an environment. It's because LexD runs all of its containers unprivileged, um, meaning that uh, if we actually go look at my process list and we locate the Docker container down here. Okay, so we can see that the entire entire demo container is running as UID 100, uh, 1 million or more, um, instead of being run as effectively root. And that means that the process is running inside of the Docker container down here. They're actually running as 1 million and 33. Now, if you go look inside of the Docker, instead of the XT container, those appear to be showing, um, they show up as uh, 3W data, which is, I believe, uh, ID distributed data that's going to be 33. So Docker effectively runs things privileged. It doesn't itself do any kind of UID and GID mapping for security purposes. Um, the workloads, because they run inside the XD container, don't really notice that this is going on. But some actions they might try to do might expect more privileges than what LexD actually gives them, and that might cause some failures. Uh, that particularly happens if you're running something inside a Docker container that expects to run as root and being able to act, to do actions as a real root user, but instead will only be allowed to do as much as root inside of a LexD container, which is quite a bit more constrained. Uh, so there are a few images that don't really play well with, not, with that, but the vast majority of them do just fine. And that's it. That was a quick look at Docker running inside of a LexD container. Some of the configuration tweaks to do, some of the, the details to keep in mind, like in this case, the issue with uh, running on ZFS and the, the results being pretty much exactly as you would expect it. Um, you get Docker containers run, running inside of LexD. Hope that was useful. Um, maybe it applies to, to, to the kind of workload that you want to run. Maybe it will make things simpler because you get to just run some of uh, those containers inside LexD instead of running them directly on the whole system. And if you've got any questions or any problems, then reach out uh, either in the comments or on our community forum. Thanks for watching.